Hi there, this is Alana, and you guys are listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast with me and Jamie Hampton. How's it going, Jamie? It's going well. How are you? I'm good. Our kids are in the other room having fun on their little video game thingy, so that's been fun to overhear them chatting with each other and stuff. It is. It is. They were talking about the podcast earlier, and... (laughs) It was really cute. Like your oldest boy was telling my youngest son, like, I don't think I've ever heard any of their episodes. Oh, wait, no, I did hear. And they just were going. It was very cute. That's funny. Next thing you know, we'll have like, you know, three new listeners, well, three new subscribers and we'll know who they are. (laughs) Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) All righty. Well, we are back into, again, kind of a more typical episode format. Bear with us because with all the COVID conversations and then other things going on, I still feel like we're getting our sea legs back. (laughs) I do too. It's not like we've just, and, and that's the other thing is in the past we've done like a day of batch, a couple of days of batches. Mm -hmm. So we get into the kind of get into the routine of it. And we haven't really done that quite. The first one might feel a little rocky, but then by the time we've recorded three or four, it's yeah, yeah, we could do it in our sleep. Wouldn't that be funny if we had like a, a sleepover? I don't think they call it sleepovers for adults. I don't know what the equivalent would be, but like we, we just go in our sleep. party. Pajama, pajama party, party? Is that what you call Except it? Except I would call it a pajama party. So, you know, we've got East Coast, West Coast right That's there. That's right. <laughs> Representing. The do, you two- say, do you say aunt or aunt? Aunt. Oh, you okay. Say aunt or aunt? Yeah, I say aunt. But it's funny because I have sort of a mix because I think the D.C. metropolitan area mm-hmm. is like a little different than some it's of the more little- southern because like right. I have my family maybe has more of like a southern kind of Mm-hmm. vocabulary. My mom used to say, oh, she used to say different things. Um, I don't know if it was my mom or just my grandmother said wash instead of wash. Yes. And yes. I know in Washington state, there were, that's kind of common too. People call it Washington. Right. And I'm trying to think if my mom said that, but she said roof. She would say roof instead of roof. I said roof. roof. So I don't okay. know what that is. Did you say roof or roof? I say roof, although, you know, so I grew up in California, but then when I was 12, we moved to Michigan and I lived there from like junior high, high school. Um, It's where I went back home during college and things. And so I have a tiny bit of a Midwestern accent too. I can hear it sometimes actually when I'm listening to our recordings. Um, Yeah. So it's like, it's half Valley girl, half Midwestern. Like that's my blend. (laughs) (laughs) I'll have to name mine. I don't say about, and I don't say, um, yeah, there's just some funny things. I, I'm never going to call soda pop. I'm never, never going to do it. Do you call it Coke? Is that your thing? <laughs> we used to. I, I say yep. soda now, but I did used to say just Coke. But yeah, we do say yeah. soda. Yep. <laughs> it's funny, all of the differences. So anyway, uh, what are we talking about today? Today. <laughs> we should open in a word of prayer, right? Isn't that what we do? We are praying Christian women, so I think we should. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's open with a word of prayer. Yeah. And you know what? Like I sometimes do, I'll reveal the topic in our prayer. Oh, oh, you're going to be <laughs> one of those kinds. Do you remember our episode? It was like yes. five people in a, in a prayer meeting. <laughs> And okay, so what are we going to call you? We're going to call you, it's, um, what's it called when an author puts like too much narrative exposition? You're yeah. going to be the, um, the expositor. Right, the expositor <laughs> so, prayer. The expositor prayer or, or the um, spoiler, spoiler breaker. What is it called? Like if you reveal a spoiler. Uh, spoiler revealer. Spoiler. I you're just a spoiler. You're just a spoiler. <laughs> you're, you're this. You're the prayer spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that sounds kind of like like a like a superhero name or something. The spoiler. <laughs> oh, the spoiler. Okay, can spoiler. I tell you my worst pun? Yeah. I am like I am really, really, really into like bad dad jokes way more so than my husband is, mm-hmm. and so I'm the one who gets like the kids to roll their eyes. Okay. So we're walking the dogs. There's this place in our neighborhood. It's maybe like a mile and a half away, but they raise, not llamas, alpacas. And I've seen them on some of my walks with my husband, but the kids have never yet seen the alpacas. 
And we've tried a couple times, like once it started raining on us, blah, blah, blah. So last night I was on a walk with the two younger boys. It was just the three of us. And we were going to go see the alpacas. And then the puppy pooped. And, you know, we have the little trash bags we carry with us, but none of the kids like carrying the bag a really long time, which I totally get. Yeah. Um, and so the child who was in charge of this particular puppy, I gave him the choice. I said, well, do you want to go and just carry it or do you want to just head home so we can dump it? And he decided that he wanted to go home and dump it. And so I was able to call the dog a literal party pooper and got the best eye rolls out of probably like the whole month. See, so. I think that's clever and I like I it. I'm also so the one that gets eye rolls and <laughs> I like to pun and yep. yeah, I know it's hard. It's lonely. At all, the right, all right. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> all right. Go be a prayer spoiler for us okay. and let's open you in a word of prayer. All right. Father, we just come before you today and honestly, as, as lighthearted as our intro was, just with heavy hearts, there's so much going on in the world today. There, there is just too much to even wrap our minds around right now. Um, and Father, we just, we, we just lift up this time to you and ask that you would help us to just focus on you, that you would minister to our hearts. And um, as we talk about prayers of lament, just taking our lamentations, taking our pain and sometimes our confusion about what's going on around us to you in prayer, that you would help us to understand how we can incorporate that into our prayer lives in a way that would bring healing, um, that wouldn't take us down a, a negative spiral, but that would just lead us to healing, that would point us to you and your power and, and just the, the amazing truth that you are on your throne. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So our verse for today is from Lamentations, which is definitely um, full of lament as the, it's not just a clever name. <laughs> is that, that's not a pun. <laughs> it's not a pun. It really is. So Lamentations, what I liked, I, I chose this passage. It's a little longer than usual, but it really encapsulates not just lament, but it kind of brings it around full circle because I think it's, we'll talk mm -hmm. about this later, but it's important to make sure that our lamentations are big picture. So I love this one. Mm -hmm. Lamentations mm -hmm. chapter three, verses 13 to 23. He pierced my heart with arrows from his quiver. I became the laughing stock of all my people. They mocked me in song all day long. He has filled me with bitter herbs and given me gall to drink. He has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. I've been deprived of peace. I've forgotten what prosperity is. So I say my splendor is gone and all that I had hoped from the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. I love that. Um, before we dive in, I want to give a super quick warning. There's people doing yard work outside, so my dogs might just at any point go absolutely crazy. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> I didn't tell you. I was doing, um, so for those of you who are very, very astute listeners, you may have noticed that I didn't jump on a recording with Jamie. I think it's been maybe even a full two weeks and I was busy getting some trainings for authors like ready and doing a lot of teaching in my author training group. And so I was on this live call and I looked out my window, it overlooks the street and I see my two dogs running down the road. And so I freak out. I'm like, guys, I need to go. My dogs have somehow gotten out. Um, they're not, you know, outdoor dogs. Whenever they're out, they're on a leash. Oh. And and then, so I'm about to like, you know, quickly end this call and go figure out how my dogs got out and how I'm going to get them home. And then I look and I see my dogs are on my chair in my office where they've always been. What? There was two dogs, like the exact same, the same sizes, the same colors, the same markings. And they were just running down the road, but they weren't my dogs. So <laughs> that is crazy. What are the chances? It's it your, was. Your your, then, do well, your doggle, like my, gang doggle gangers. Doggle gangers. I love it. <laughs> it is no longer lonely here at the top because I have you. <laughs> All righty. Um, just for fun question. What is one thing that always makes you smile when you're feeling down? Puppy pictures. <laughs> 
<laughs> puppy pictures. Puppy yes. Pictures. Oh, tell tell everybody about your puppies. Yeah. So we have. Um, we are pretty much. I mean, we've been hesitant to be like definite, definite, just because you never know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. but yeah, I think you're we're like pretty a week out, right? We well. So we're one, two. They're five weeks, and we're gonna get them at nine. Okay. So probably oh, four. Oh, okay. So still a few more weeks. Okay. Yeah, so a few more. But we might get to see them this weekend. I don't know how it's oh. going to work. We might get to Are do... Are you going to take tons of pictures? Oh, oh yes, yes. But of I don't course. know for sure if it's going to work out with the COVID restrictions and with her being mm -hmm. comfortable with stuff. They have an outdoor pen. So my thought is maybe they're going to... They're only six families. So maybe it'll be like mm -hmm. a one at a time or I'm not sure how it'll work. Right. But okay. even if it doesn't, we'll do like a video call this weekend. But... Oh, I've been getting, so yeah, we call them pup dates and my kids are always like, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of obsessively checking Facebook for updates on the puppies <laughs> and my kids will say, has there been a pup date? And so that is cute. Puppy pictures, puppy videos. That has been just warming my heart and making me happy. Plus yeah. I have another friend who, um, her bearded collies, which are just such cute animals. They're amazing. Yeah, they're dogs. very pretty. Do they, mm -hmm. She just had puppies like a week behind Aww. the litter that we're going to get a puppy Aww. from. And so she's been posting tons of pictures every day and I love it. So yeah. 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 We'll do that. Our, one of our go-tos for the, um, especially for my youngest is just like funny dog compilations on YouTube. Mm -hmm. When he was getting ready for his tonsillectomy, like it was probably 90 minutes. So just prep. Um, most of that was waiting, you know, but especially like there was, um, they had to get the IV in and he was feeling kind of nervous. And so we just, we got on my phone on YouTube and just watched a bunch of funny dog compilations. Um, yeah, that's for sure a go-to that makes us smile when we're down. Or even if it's just one of those really bad days where, you know, just everybody's on each other's nerves. Yeah. Um, I think your family might have had one of those yesterday. <laughs> we did. It all came to a head. It was ugly. It was and now that ugly. our kids are like regularly talking to each other every day. Yeah. We get the inside scoop into your family drama. You get the scoop into our family drama. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it occurred fun. while they were on the phone with your, yes. your kid. And I was like, oh my goodness, guys. <laughs> Pretend like we've got it together, please. Yeah, no. Gosh, we've <laughs> known each other long enough, Jamie. We don't need to do that. I but, know. You know, for days like that, we're like, it's not one thing that's just gone horribly wrong. It's just like everybody's kind of yeah, on cranky. edge. Yeah. You know, just funny, cute dog videos. <laughs> it's the way to go, man. <laughs> it is. It really is. Yeah. Anything that gets you laughing. I think laughter is so important and powerful in turning your mood around and even like the, the family vibe mm -hmm. around for sure. Oh, absolutely. It definitely mm -hmm. is. Yeah. So with all that, I think, do you get the sense that we're stalling, <laughs> that we're like talking about these all fun, like goofy things so that we don't have to dive Before deeply into Before jumping into, into like, the prayers of lamentation. And yes. now... <laughs> Let's give an overview because some people are going to listen to this the day it drops and they're going to be right on board. Some people are going to be listening to this like two years from now. Let's just right. do it. And think so, what on earth is going on? That's what are we talking about? Yeah. Yes. So we've got, I mean, the COVID thing is still going on. Mm -hmm. um, Alaska is opening up. Some places are opening up, but as they're opening up, we're seeing more cases. So like, it's not over. Um it's possible that the most drastic of measures are over, but the pandemic itself and things like that, that's not over. And now, in addition, we've got this whole thing going on with um, writing and this horrible um, case of, you know, a man getting killed in police custody. Like, there's just, there's really, really bad things going on. Yeah. Right and as now. a result of all, oh, go ahead. Sometimes puppy videos aren't really going to solve it. <laughs> no, puppy videos don't solve anything. They might lighten the mood though, but they, yeah, no, puppy videos yeah. don't, don't fix everything. And, you know, I think as a result of these things that are going on there, there's a lot of ugliness. I think that, that grieves me too. Just seeing so much division and escalating mm -hmm. polarization mm -hmm. among like, lots of different issues as a result yeah. of the things that are going on. And yes. that is, 
that's sad too. So on a positive note, I have not heard anything about murder hornets in the last week or two. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm going to stall one last time. <laughs> Good. Let's there stall. Was... We, are, we are dragging our feet like pros here. So yesterday, my kids went outside to play and they found, my oldest found something and he's like, there's this really like giant, weird looking flying bug out here on the ground and I want you to look at it. It looks dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, murder hornet. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it was just a horse fly, but it's oh, just really? funny because it's that big. And, yeah. Oh, it was big. And, but I Googled murder hornet because I haven't paid much attention to them. I've, I've seen right. like the funny memes and stuff, but yeah. I haven't really expected to see one. So. Right. Alaska is amazingly protected. Like the only thing we need to worry about are earthquakes, tsunamis, moose and bear. And those are all like, they're all scary and dangerous, but they're big, scary, <laughs> you know, right. like even, even our ticks don't carry Lyme disease yet. Like it's right? actually a really nice place to live. There's no venomous snakes. There's no indigenous snakes. No venomous um, It's actually spiders. pretty nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It Mosquitoes is. are bad, but they don't carry horrible disease. Um, yeah. Go Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> I would, wouldn't you rather be taken out by like, okay, so here's one more stop. My kids and I had this, <laughs> like the most quintessential Alaska conversation ever. Would you rather die by getting killed by a moose or a bear? What would you pick? I would pick a moose because I'm pretty sure the moose would just like, it would be like blunt force trauma, like just a whack with the hoof to the head mm -hmm. and you'd be out. I do not want to be okay. like eviscerated by a bear. Okay. See, I picked a bear because I was thinking that that would just be quicker. The um, bear, you like, think? See, I'll take whatever's think, quicker. Yeah, I'll take okay. the scientific, definitive, whatever's quicker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now let's talk about lament. <laughs> okay. So lament. So what is, how would you define a prayer of lament? I think a prayer of lament would be a prayer born out of sorrow, where you're basically telling God how heartbroken you are. And I think a really important key is that you don't need to rush to the part of the prayer where there's hope. Right. I think that the ideal prayer of lament is, is going to end with a hopeful note, but you know, there's not every single psalm in the, you know, in all 150 Psalm ends hopefully. And so I think that a prayer of lament, yeah, it's great when it does lead to hope. And I think that a, uh, like a, a lifestyle of lamentful prayer is going to end in hope. I don't think that you can persist for like months in prayers of lament without eventually getting to a place of hope. But I think one of the biggest keys is that it's okay to sit in your sorrow for as long as that takes and you don't need to rush to get to the happy other side. I think that's a good point because, and I think that kind of, that leads us to one of the later questions, which was like, what is the difference between lamenting in prayer or just complaining and grumbling and spiraling mm. into, I think that's, that's, that's the a difference point. there because you're right. If you're truly connecting with God, if you're really taking your prayers of lament to him, I kind of had assumed, well, you need to always balance it out and make sure you come back to, but you don't. And sometimes you can't. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. I mean, yeah. I think of our conversation with Kay Warren, who lost her son tragically. And there, I, I don't picture her as she took her prayers of lament mm -hmm. to God, always ending that on a high right. note. So mm -hmm. I think that is a really but, important distinction. Yeah. Yeah, but let's, you know, put words into Kay's mouth, which Gosh. obviously we, we, I'm joking there. No, <laughs> But, I... you know, I would guess that if you were to take her entire prayer life, mm -hmm. the hope would balance out the laments. But it each would. individual prayer doesn't need to be like a 50% lament, 50% praise or something no, like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And actually, she has a resource that I'm going to link to that was really good where she talks about, she has a worksheet outlining prayers of lament using Psalm mm -hmm. 13. And it has three parts. It has invocation, petition, and it ends with praise, which I know that in theory, mm -hmm. that's, that's probably what she would like. But yeah, but no, I, I think it's important not to rush into pretending like we're okay. Because I think as Christians, 
And this is another question. Do you think that kind of Western culture has frowned on lament or shied away from it more so than other cultures that gr where grief might be more freely expressed? So I think that, yeah, different cultures for sure deal with grief differently. I don't know enough about like anthropology to know for sure if it's like a Western Eastern thing. Like I actually heard a, a very amazing testimony from a missionary in Mongolia who lost their baby to SIDS on the field. And I guess in Mongolia, or at least a part of Mongolia where he was, it's like you bury that person and never talk about it again. And in my mind, like, yeah, no, that's not a good way to deal with, <laughs> with grief. So I don't know if it's a Western Eastern thing, but mm -hmm. I can talk at least to like American culture, which is what I know mm -hmm. more thoroughly. And I would say that, yeah, in general, we're not very comfortable with staying in dark places, um, especially in the church. I think that, for example, if I were to come to you and say, well, maybe not you, like we've got a very deep relationship, but just like the typical person, they come to you on a Sunday and they say, I'm really struggling. You know, things are really, really hard right now. Most of us, our initial inclination is going to be to try to cheer them up and encourage them. And that's just kind of the most of us aren't comfortable sitting with other people in their grief wow. like Job and his friends did, you know? And wow. so I think that even if you're the person grieving, there's kind of this pressure to make other people around you more comfortable by not being in a lot of grief. Um, I don't know if that kind of addresses your question, but that's kind of just the first thing that popped into my head. No, I think that's important. And that might not be exactly on topic, but I, that is such a good point. Because even as you said, I was picturing myself being at church and having someone mm -hmm. come to me. And I feel like, you know, encouragement is one of my, whenever I take the tests, the gifts mm -hmm. of encouragement is one of my, right, right. one of my things. I do. I feel immediately my thought, as soon as you said that, I'm thinking, how would I respond? immediately I would want to lift them up and and sometimes that's sometimes, good you know what I mean? sometimes it's sometimes. good but yeah but but we need I think really to think that sometimes people just need someone to sit with them and cry with them mm -hmm. and be sad yeah. with them yeah. yeah yeah so my mom did this really interesting thing that always stuck with me in high school we had a very very close fam friend who was um kind of like a sort of a surrogate grandma and she was struggling with a lot of health issues and at one point she was in the hospital and my mom just had a book of psalms of lament i forget if it was just psalms from the bible or i think it might have even been like you know kind of modern day psalms of lament and she just sat and read these to her and my thought was kind of like wow mom that's so depressing <laughs> you know like aren't you supposed to try to cheer her up mm -hmm. um but I think there is a time for that. But let's circle back because also there, there truly is a time to kind of just get yourself out of a funk. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So let's go back to your question about is it, is it time for lamenting or is it just complaining? And how do you know the difference? Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Let me think. So. I don't either because it's a hard one because on the one hand, like my first reaction is to say, okay, well, is this like, is this a selfish kind of thing? Like, oh, I couldn't, you know, I didn't get the raise I wanted. But then again, that's, that's a true legitimate sorrow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people now are struggling with being furloughed or laid off. Those are genuine things. So I never want it to be like one of the things I hate about what we were talking about in culture and like not being comfortable with people in pain. Mm -hmm. I hate pointing to something else and being like, Hey, you don't have it as bad as right. this. It could you know, be worse. like, okay, but it could be better too. You know? So like, no matter what you're going through, um, like, for example, you and I have had more candid conversations than we're having right now about the race things, the riots, all of that. And I know that this is like weighing heavy, but there's also this sense of, well, you know, we're not, okay, we're not African Americans in an inner city place. We're also not in an area where we're really worried about looters. So what do we have to 
complain about, <laughs> you know, and no, that's, that's not true because you and I are both, we're empathetic. We feel things. That's part of what allows us to be effective at praying. So I would just say, I don't know exactly how to describe the difference between if it's time to lament or if you're just complaining. But one thing I do know is that just because someone else has it worse doesn't mean that your sorrow is not legitimate. Yeah. Well, I, and I wonder if lamenting has the, I won't say the focus on God, but it is the focus on God. Lamenting your focus is on God. It's, it's born out of self, but it's like your the focus is on God in terms of being with him, expressing it's about the relationship true. with God. Mm -hmm. Complaining, I think it's a subtle difference that I don't know if I could explain, mm -hmm. but I feel like with complaining mm -hmm. and grumbling, you're looking in, you're not focused I out. I think you're right. You're not yeah. pouring out, you're recycling and, and ruminating mm -hmm. kind of. I think in, that's a really good point. Yeah. Without that being lament. receptive to what God has yeah. to give you back. I think you're right. So maybe we could even say that like the same event could lead to lament or complaining. Mm -hmm. And the difference is if you're taking all of that negative energy and just kind of absorbing it, mm -hmm. you know, like in introspection, mm -hmm. then yeah, that's being self-absorbed, complaining, things like that. Um, truly though, I mean, if that's where you are, that's where you are. I mean, if my husband were to get killed today, I'm definitely going to think about how that's going to impact me. <laughs> You know, so I don't want people to feel like they, they can't look inward, but I think you're right that lamenting, I kind of picture lamenting as sitting with God in your sorrow mm -hmm. instead of just kind of wrapping yourself in sorrow and absorbing that. I think that is the difference that whether it's inward focused or like focused up toward the Lord. Yeah. Or even shutting God off and mm -hmm. putting up a barricade, mm -hmm. going back to yeah. Warren's interview because we just re-aired that a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's kind of fresh in my mind. And I just remember her talking uh -huh. about how she, um, she got to the point of, it wasn't like she didn't believe in God. She believed that he was mean, but she didn't believe it. She didn't mm -hmm. not believe in him. So even if I think it's not shutting him out, even if it means expressing your frustration with him or for sure. Yeah. And not being afraid to it, do that. I think that's yeah. another element of lamentation that I think sometimes we're afraid. I know sometimes I get kind of on edge when I get to the point of questioning God or, you know, he knows those thoughts are in your head. Might exactly. as well so you may acknowledge as well it. it. <laughs> yeah. So, and I think I agree. He, he can take it. And exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's big enough to take, even if you're angry at God, even if you know that your your feelings toward God maybe are even sinful, like he still knows that anyway. So you may as well admit it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. What are some, is there anything more that you wanted to say about just general what a prayer of lament is? Or do you think we got that? I was going to kind of move into practical tips and strategies for how you can create prayers of lament or how you can pray these prayers. But was there anything else, any other topics you wanted? You to know, talk one about? of the pictures that I really like where we're talking about just kind of sitting with God in our sorrow. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the book of Isaiah and the king gets this. I might be like getting a few tidbits uh, slightly off but the king gets this threatening letter from the opposing enemy basically saying like here's all the things i'm going to do to you and your god's not going to be able to deliver you and what he does he takes that letter and like presents it to god in the temple mm -hmm. and i i really do take that as like taking your burden god already knows the burden sometimes you don't even need to repeat the burden do you know what i mean like sometimes we think that our prayers need to be so literal and like grammatically correct and in, you know, paragraph form. And sometimes I think it's okay to just come with a heart full of horrific sorrow and just kind of lay that in front of God. That's kind of a picture that I like from that story in Isaiah. Oh, I like that because again, mm -hmm. I think we're tempted to feel like we have to put words mm -hmm. to our prayers. Yep. 
God knows what's going on. <laughs> he doesn't need that. You know, it's the whole, the spirit yeah. intercedes with groans too deep for words. Mm-hmm. And just, I like the way you put it. How did you say sitting with God in your sorrow? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if you're just sitting, you know, even if yeah. you're just weeping and crying or, or yeah. just sitting there numb because you just don't even know what to pray mm-hmm. for. That right. very powerful inviting yeah. God into that. Yes, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, let's go into some of the kind of practical, teach me how to lament, Jamie. Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Tell me. I thought you were going to take this the lead on this. Oh one. man. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thanks for listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Alana. This is Jamie. We'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah, send us some comments with ideas and we'll add That's it right. That's right. Show notes. Well, you know what? Here's something. When is a time that you have been like the most sorrowful and and what did your prayers look like at that time? Okay. So I can think of two that, that come to my mind. Um, one was when my mom died. And actually, mm-hmm. my prayer, my, I was more sorrowful while my mom was ill because the worst part of her, she had dementia. The very worst parts of her illness were when she was aware that she was ill and she was kind of in and out and she felt guilty and horrible the way that She was putting my dad through so much. And, and I just remember one particular time where I just, we were out to dinner and she was still able to get around and, but she would have these moments where she would become paranoid and not recognize my dad. And she called the cops on him Mm -hmm. a few times. So she had a moment, really good dinner. It was with my in-laws and my dad and my mom and my husband and I, and my mom was very lucid, very with it. And I just remember her as we were walking in to be seated, talking to my mother-in-law and me and just saying how she just, she had just had a time like that a couple of days before where she had I think, mm-hmm. called the police on my dad and she was just crying and she was so sad that she was putting my dad through this and that she was mm-hmm. frustrated that she had this disease. And I just remember going into the bathroom and, and just sobbing and wailing and, and just crying. And mm-hmm. then there were times and, and I was, um, not living in the same town with her. So Mm -hmm. it was the times that my dad was really struggling and I wasn't able to be there to help that I felt helpless. And I remember another very specific time when I just was heartbroken and didn't even know what to do. We had friends visiting and I just fell apart and felt horrible that I wasn't being a better hostess, but (laughs) it was, it was, yeah. And so those, those were some of my most heartfelt just, and the way that my prayer life looked then um, I prayed, I, I prayed fervently for healing. I think I was at the, t- at, at the point there that I, I did go through some, why don't you just heal people when we ask you to God? Like, why can't yeah. you do that? But at the same time, I, I did understand. And so there were those times where I was just like, God, this just stinks. Just, you know, mm-hmm. and just cried and I don't know. Um, and then the other time I can think of is, my broken engagement in college up to that Mm -hmm. point, that was probably Mm -hmm. one of the toughest things because I was about to graduate from college. I had this life planned and then all of a sudden it was like, whoa, like total change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think I tried to make it okay. And I even had a a close friend, Mm -hmm. our youth pastor that was saying, you know, I, I kind of feel like you're stuffing this down. I don't think you're dealing with Mm -hmm. this because I was in a hurry to show and prove that I was a good Christian and that I right embraced God's plan. And yeah, this is, and I, you mm-hmm. know, and so I was very numb and I don't know, it took yeah. years for me to finish processing all of that. I think I'm over mm-hmm. it now, but, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I think I stuffed it. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that, you know, sometimes maybe we even stuff things as a protective thing. Like I think about when Silas was in the hospital and yeah, Scott and I felt some pressure to put on the good Christian front of, Mm -hmm. we know God's got amazing plans. Um, There was a little bit of that, but honestly, a lot of it was just, we couldn't have handled the entirety of those emotions. Like I went, I cried the day he was born because I went, so super quick recap, he was born, everything seemed fine, he stopped breathing, he was medevaced right away to another hospital, it took me a couple hours till I was released to join him, 
I had to have a nurse show me which child was mine. I, I wouldn't have recognized him. And so like I cried then, I cried the day before we were let out like six weeks later and it was so silly. Do you know those Red Cross CPR training videos? Mm -hmm. And they're so canned. It's like, you go call 911. <laughs> yes. Before we, before we got released, we needed to go through infant CPR training, which makes tons of sense. Mm -hmm. And it was that ridiculously canned but it was so hard to watch thinking about a newborn because that that's exactly what had happened in the delivery room. Right. And it was not until his second birthday that I cried again. Mm -hmm. um, and that was when like he wasn't touch and go anymore. We knew he was going to survive. He still had issues, but it wasn't nearly as severe as what we were expecting. And it wasn't until his second birthday when I finally realized like all of the normal happy baby moments that we missed and I really don't think so sometimes I think that yeah we just stuff it down but sometimes we're just not ready to process everything all at once like we were in survival mode for two years because there were so many appointments and so many things plus we had you know a toddler to take care of and it's so sad like looking at pictures of her family he's just our our oldest son who was only like one and a half and Silas born he just looks so sad during those times um, well, and you had so, another child too I think sometimes we mm -hmm. are in survival mode especially if something tragic happens while you have children to care for also I mean you oh, had a sure. newborn baby to care for yeah. plus you had your young mm -hmm. firstborn and yeah. yeah I feel like maybe sometimes our grief isn't able to be fully dealt with or expressed or experienced mm -hmm. because we're in survival mode because of exactly. the tasks before us right day -to -day. sometimes you got to get the kids through I think about that I don't know if this is totally normal or if I should like never even publicly admit this but like I go through scenarios like you know if Scott were to die in a car accident today um you know I think about that kind of thing and and I truly do think like number one priority is to help my kids get through it right. and then like a couple years later is when I get to mourn for myself like that's yeah. kind of how I see that playing out mm -hmm. yeah so no anyway I, yeah happy happy conversation <laughs> <laughs> it's okay we not need a good to pun. be happy <laughs> <laughs> it is okay. And I think that's a really important thing to remember as well. And and it's okay to not know what to say to somebody. Sometimes you, you cannot, there are not the words to cheer somebody up right then. And that's right. okay too. Mm -hmm. Well, and so I, I'd say like some practical ways that you could engage in prayers of lament if you're wondering like, well, how do I even do this? Or wanting guidance. One thing you could write a letter to God mm -hmm. in common everyday language about your concerns or about the things that are bothering you. Or you could reword one of the Psalms because you'll find prayers of lament and you'll, you'll find lamentations in the book of lamentations. The book of Psalms has several, mm -hmm. many Lots. laments. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they're elsewhere in the Bible too. You could find one of those that resonates with you and rewrite that mm -hmm. as if like from your own perspective, adding your, your own concerns and and heartaches right. mm -hmm. um yeah i like the thought of writing writing things out i think yeah. that you know that's especially for me useful for processing and to just kind of get your thoughts out on the page and to realize that you don't need to censor anything because god knows exactly how you feel mm -hmm. i've also done this where i've been like there have been times when i've been in the car and I have been angry or frustrated about something or hurt and I'll just kind of like yell loud. I'll talk to God, but I, sometimes I'm yelling sometimes not yet, you know, and I, I think that that's okay too, where you're just kind of crying and yelling, mm -hmm. express yourself verbally to God in that same way. And even if you want to set a timer and just say, okay, I'm not going to go on forever, but for two minutes, yes. I'm going to just let it all out. And whether it's mm -hmm. just crying or whether it's, it's crying out to God with, words about the things mm -hmm. that are on your heart. I think that's effective too. Being okay. Yeah. And having that timer, I think is a neat symbol of this isn't going to last forever. You know, like I read this funny post of just somebody was in the library studying. I think it was on their college campus. Mm -hmm. Someone like they were just people watching someone's timer went off. So he sat there, he closed his book it's bizarre, but it, to me, it kind of makes sense. He closed his book when his timer beeped. He cried for five minutes, then his timer beeped again. Then he 
leaned his face up, opened his book and went back to whatever. Like it was, it was meant kind of as a slight hearted, like, you know, this was the weirdest thing I've seen today, but I think there might be times where, you know what? Yeah. Give yourself that little bit. I've, I've heard this sometimes even for trauma victims. Um, not that I would feel qualified to give advice in that scenario, but what I've heard is that sometimes a counselor, a counselor will encourage someone to set a timer each day, take five minutes to think about what happened when your timer goes off. That is when you get to move on. And so it's almost like you're doling out your pain in little digestible chunks. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, I think that's, that's helpful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Going back to my mom, like, um, I heard she had a funny, and, and this wasn't like her life philosophy. It was just kind of like a, a little glib thing, but it's like for each sad thing that happens, you kind of have an allotment of tears. And until you get those tears out, like you're not totally over it. And again, like neither of us recognize it was true. It was just kind of um, a simplified way of looking at things. And I could totally see that though. I mean, I look back and mm -hmm. I could see mm -hmm. that. I could totally see that. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, sometimes that would be how she would describe why, you know, like the Hallmark commercial made her cry. <laughs> you know, I was like, well, I haven't finished crying about this thing way back here. So I've still got a few more tears left. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes it can be helpful to look at it as almost this quantitative thing. Like mm -hmm. I've got to spend this amount of time or energy or tears kind of processing through this. And no, some things you're never going to get fully over, but you're definitely going to get to the other side of the intense pain. Mm -hmm. And let's also remember, like, getting over the pain isn't really the goal. Right. You know, the goal is to draw closer to God. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, such an intimate way to draw closer to the Lord. Right. It's by sitting with him in the sorrow. Yeah. And there is some pain that's never going to fully go away, no matter what. Right. And so. Until heaven. Yes. Until heaven. Yeah. But I like that. The goal is not. You've got so many quotable quotes in this episode. I'm going to like I know. take we notes. We should Instagram it up. <laughs> That's right. The goal is not getting over your pain. The goal is yeah. drawing closer to God. Love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me too. It's, it's, uh, it's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. Me. It should be an Instagram quote. It's Instagrammable. <laughs> Instagrammable. That's perfect. Yes. All right. Well, anything else? Are there any, um, I mean, there's lots of journaling stuff that you can do probably mm -hmm. and, you know, going back and maybe later on at a time when you're not so emotionally in it, going back and seeing the blessings within some of those things. I don't know that that's something you should do right away though. I think that's the whole purpose, like yeah. you said, of the lament is to put it out there. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe we could talk about personal lament versus lamenting just things going on. I think there maybe is a little bit of a difference. You know, the lamenting prayers that I would pray if a tragedy befell one of my kids, it's going to be totally different than the lamenting about like what's going on in the world. And that's okay. Like I don't, I don't feel like a terrible selfish person to stand in front of a camera and say, like, it's going to be a different type of morning for me if something happens to my child mm -hmm. <laughs> than it is, like, reading headlines. But there's lament in both. Um, so I guess maybe if we want to talk about, like, prayers of lament just for current events, another thing mm -hmm. that can be incorporated, and we see this many times in Scripture, is this idea of kind of corporate confession, where yeah. I know Daniel does it, Nehemiah does it, where it's not just... God, it's terrible that these people over here did this thing, but it's God forgive us because we mm -hmm. do this. And it's, it's kind of putting yourself almost like not in a theological term, but just kind of in a symbolic image of you're, you're kind of now the one interceding on behalf of the world, right? It, you know, kind of in that priestly, um, in that priestly role, again, not theologically, but just symbolically. Yeah, but and so stand, literally say, standing in the gap. I mean, that's exactly, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And so I think that that's important in prayers for lament, that it's not appointing your finger at other people saying, I'm so sickened that these other people do this, but to remember that the entire world is stained by sin mm -hmm. and that we can kind of corporately confess those sins to the Lord. 
Yeah. And you know, for me, there have been a couple of times that I've been really surprised. There was one time when I was um, at one of our other churches and other places that we lived and um, I we were just all praying before the service and I just had this like grief. It, I, we were, I think the whole point was corporate repentance as a church, mm -hmm. as a, I think it was mm -hmm. just as a church that was part of it. It was during this time of prayer and fasting. And I felt this tremendous grief, even though, you know, I, and it was, it was like a, it came after I started praying. It wasn't like I prayed because I felt this deep emotion mm -hmm. and repent and feelings of repentance. But right. as I prayed, I truly genuinely felt this deep grief over our collective sin. And it's yeah. happened a couple of other times. And recently it's happened, you know, with what's going on lately, I was praying and, um, and just weeping, you know, just God, I feel like there's power in that. I can't explain what that is or what, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can look at it in many different yeah. ways, but, but I just feel like there's a lot of power in, you know, choosing to do that kind of corporate. Absolutely. Repentance. Well, and there are people who kind of make an entire ology out of like studying um, revivals throughout mm. church history. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the common threads that many people have noted is that the, the major, major revivals, the ones that make history books and the ones that you probably have never heard of, they start with this kind of corporate confession. Um, and it's powerful to keep in mind. Yeah. So yeah. Any other closing thoughts? Uh, I will link to the worksheet that Kay Warren shares um, and using Psalm 13, if you'd like a worksheet. Otherwise, um, yeah, I think that's that was a good conversation. Yeah. And I think one thing I also want to close with is like we talked about how you don't need to feel guilty for sitting in your sorrow. You don't need to feel guilty for being joyful either. Right. And I think that that could be the other extreme mm -hmm. that people fall into, like you're having a great day right now with your family, you're safe and well provided for. It's okay to be absolutely thankful for that. I think it's in James, you know, if anybody's happy, let them sing songs. If anybody's yeah. sick, let them ask for prayer. You know, if anybody's sorrow, if you're sorrowful, lament, if you're mm -hmm. happy, praise like, and, and it's okay to, um, to do that. And sometimes, especially I think for people like you and me, Jamie, where with current events and things, we do feel it so deeply. Yeah. I think sometimes just for our own health and well-being, sometimes we have to be okay realizing, okay, I can't do anything about this right now. Um, it's okay for me to focus on myself, my family, the things that are going great right now. That doesn't mean we're completely deaf. It just means that you can pray, you can lament, you can intercede, but there's also time to just realize, you know what, this is bigger than what I can handle. And I'm going to let God be the one in charge of this. And you don't have to always have the organ on yourself. That's a good word. Awesome. All righty. Well, let's see what we do next. Cause I have no idea what happens next. Oh, all righty. We get, we get to call you guys to action. That's what we say in our notes. Our call to action today. <laughs> Jamie, is it Rosie the Riveter? Is that the name of the, the woman with like the, uh, the big, we can do it. That's what you reminded me of. Yeah. The, anyway. the poster. Right. Yeah. Yes. All right. If you guys are enjoying this podcast, uh, please share it with a friend, leave us a review, share links on social media. It really helps us get the word out so that we can reach and encourage more people like you. And now let's close with our blessing and benediction. May the Lord open the eyes of your heart and fill you with wisdom in the inmost places. May the glorious Father grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Christ who has become for us wisdom from God. In the areas of your life in need of guidance, may God grant you his wisdom in abundance so that you will not lean on your own insight, but rely on the full riches of complete understanding, which are yours in abundance through Christ. And our benediction is from Romans 11, 33 and 36. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Amen.